Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian and today we are checking out 10 of my favorite finished whiskeys in 2023. I felt like I had a lot of finished whiskeys this year and I had a lot of good ones from a lot of different producers throughout the year. So uh, this is a category, again, I felt like this year I wanted to separate it out. While there might be some double oaks or some toasted or something like that that ended up in some of the other lists, I know that some people are not about the, the finished whiskey train or the craze that's kind of going around right now. So I wanted to separate a lot of these out and put them in their own list. So these are all ones that are either finished in secondary barrels or are or finished in, in kind of weird barrels and added interesting flavors to them. Uh, so I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments below. Let me know some of your favorite finished whiskeys that you've tried this year as we get into the 10 that I like the most. This is a little bit of a two-parter and uh, let me explain a little bit. I'm gonna have it number 10, the four gate. This is the Kelvin collaboration. So this is a, eight year bourbon that's been aged in a second cask. And uh, I don't want to name it as an honorable mention, but I am going to put this um, seven year private select. They did some private selects that were finished in Spanish Oloroso sherry and dark rum. I don't find this overly rummy. I actually don't find it overly finished, but the, the difference between these two are kind of like, do you like toasty? Do you like kind of the s'mores, the, the extra oomph, the extra toast the extra char or do you like a little bit uh, of fruit nuance both of them taste nice and well aged which is what i really like i'm a little torn on which of the two i like the most but for the sake of this list we're putting forward the kelvin 60. i think this is one that fresh pop has a lot more heaviness a lot more char and as it's open it's more of a complement to the well-aged whiskey the whiskey is spiced it's got interesting caramel notes, vanilla notes, one that I feel like you notice more in the finish or in the linger than you do overall, but it is very robust of a pour. Something I really like, especially in findable whiskeys, the single barrel and the Oloroso, I feel like isn't overly rummy, which is good. You notice the fruit, you notice a lot more brightness overall, but I feel like you just maybe pick up the age of the whiskey uh, a little bit better as well, which is why I was kind of torn on the two, but we're gonna put Kelvin 60 in the place of 10 right now, but just know that Four Gates doing some really interesting stuff uh, with some relatively old whiskeys that are worth checking out. Going into number nine was another guilty pleasure pour for me, and that happens to be the Dancing Goat I Would Rye For You. This is port finished rye whiskey. This is seven years old, 55.2%. So it was a good proof point. You can maybe tell from the color, it was super red. So there's like a lot of finish on this, but if you want just a really fun fruit forward rye whiskey that still doesn't deny that it's rye, I thought this was was really fun. You have to like finishing. And I, again, that's why I put it in this list because it's super funky and has a lot of kind of a, a big boost uh, of the finishing flavoring to it. But man, I've been really enjoying this one. Uh, and this was a great price point. I wanna say this was like a $60 bottle. So really fun for cash rank seven year rye finished port whiskey, uh, this dancing goat I would ride for you. Coming in number eight, I apologize, this is my bottle is, is not open here, but this is the 2XO, this is the Innkeeper's Blend. Uh, I've been really enjoying what Dixon Deadman has been doing with the 2XO series uh, with multiple ones. I thought the Innkeeper's Blend was a little bit better than the previous one that I was able to try, but if you wanna talk about, these are Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskeys, 104 proof, so these are easy drinking and I don't feel like it has uh, the typical double oaked profile that some things do you know the really heavy char heavy toast I feel like it's like a clean uh, really good example of what you can do with toasting don't expect something like the Woodford I didn't think it had like a the overly toasty profile uh, but you get lots of caramels it was really really enjoyable if you haven't checked them out highly suggest you at least give a try at a bar uh, 2XO, I think we're gonna see some really interesting stuff. The, some of the newer bottles that came out right towards the end of the year, like their LE type things or whatever it is, I've not tried. I'd be really curious to try those, but I've loved what Dixon has done uh, in the past, and I'm curious to keep watching what he's doing uh, with 2XO. Coming in at number seven, we have Pursuit Spirits. This is their oak collection. It's a, a bourbon finished with toasted American and French oak. So. Again, transparency, you know, I do do social media and, and communications. I do a podcast with the Pursuit guys on their Pursuit Spirits brand specifically. And my my studio space here is in the Pursuit warehouse as well. So I am tied in with the guys from Pursuit, 
but I've been loving what they're doing with their products. I like the batches on their own that are not finished, but I feel like both the rise and the bourbons when they're finished just add a little bit more to the blends. They're not overly done. They're done just a, a little bit more to give a little bit more depth to what they normally have in their standard pours and initially had on my list their four CD release. So the one earlier in the year, it's actually gonna be eight CD, one of the more recent batches they've done that's gonna go in this particular list. I feel like you don't have heavy, heavy barrel influence, but you get some really good brown sugars, you get good graham cracker, you get good fruitiness, a chewy mouthfeel. This is 108 proof. I feel like it drinks kind of right at or a little bit above, but for an accessible bourbon, an accessible price point, I feel like it's a really well done blend. Having familiarity with the brand and thus knowing like where the components come from. I love trying these blends and being able to taste some of the best qualities of where they're bringing these products from. So they're distilling from Tennessee and New York and Kentucky that are making up this blend. And man, I am just, I just really think this is a really well done blend. I highly suggest checking out if you haven't already. This is the Pursuit United Oak Collection. This is 8CD. Coming in in sixth place, this is from Blue Run Spirits. This is one of the double oak single barrels that they did uh, at the Father's Day release. These are double oak rye whiskeys. I didn't exactly know what to expect with these, but I, I did try a couple of the barrels and I thought, man, this is a really well done double oaked release. This one here specifically is barrel 3F and you have these deep, rich, sophisticated notes lots of leather, kind of a soft, dark chocolate, chocolate ganache, oak. Uh, I mean, just really well drinking while not having like the deep, deep oak notes. It has great toast notes that aren't necessarily the thick, heavy barrel char. It's not necessarily bringing tons of spices. I honestly wouldn't have known this is a rye if it didn't say that it was a rye whiskey. I feel like it drinks sweet and it drinks kind of mature and sophisticated a great cigar bottle this is a great just kind of end of the day you want to step up your game from like a woodford double oak or woodford double double this is kind of in a similar camp a delicious bottle that's the blue run double oak rye we really kick things up here as we crack into five this one is 146 proof this is an insane uh, a bottle here this is from river roots 13 year bourbon finished i want to say six years in port barrels this bottle is hazmat through and through it will fill every part of your mouth it will dry out it is so intense i think that this one actually does really well if you add a, a couple drops of water but if you don't get ready for an attack on the palate uh, challenging all of your senses. Really old, really oaky, deep, thick, um, almost not moving, port finishing here. Um, really intense, interesting flavor. Um, it's kind of hard for me to drink a little bit uh, at times, but I I've poured this out for several different people and they've really, really enjoyed this bottle. Uh, I enjoy this bottle. It's just, it's such a bruiser of a pour. This is the River Roots 13 year single barrel finished in port wine. This bottle came out uh, closer to the end of the year, but as soon as I tried it, I said, this is awesome. I love this product. This is the Toasted Fiddler Weeded Bourbon. So I wanna say this is 51% corn, 45% wheat. Again, just a, a marshmallow, creamy, very delicious drinking pour. I know that I'm not the only one who's been talking about this bottle this year, but uh, for someone who was not necessarily like all that versed on the Fiddler series, um, I've been having some really enjoyable Fiddler bourbons this year, but these um, toasted ones are really well done. I like the bourbon more than the rye. I think you saw the rye um, on my rye list this year, but I think this is a really interesting weeded bourbon. I think it's a really interesting toasted bourbon. Uh, this is just a, a really great bottle. I hope you have access only. It's really good price point too. So uh, hopefully you have access to one of these, or I know there are groups who are doing picks of these in the near future. Hopefully you have a chance to try one of these. This is the Fiddler Toasted Weeded Bourbon. All right, we're punching it up once again. And this is a explosion of flavor, not only an explosion of fruit medley, an explosion of oak. I really love this pour. 
15 star. This is the Sherry Cask Finished 10 year old. So this, I wanna say is like 10 and 13 year old barrels from Kentucky and Indiana. A lot of oak, a lot of that kind of still punches through, but it's got this seeping dried fruit, kind of saturated fruit that, that sits on the palate initially, it lingers for a really long time. So if you like fruit, finished, intense pours, but also don't want to sacrifice age oakiness, 15 star cherry cask finished is a home run this year. I tried my hardest uh, not to include bottles in multiple lists this year. I mentioned that on my rye list because we had the Pursuit series, that really low proof rye that was really interesting. Um, but this was also one that happened to be on my picks list. You're seeing it again here. This is the Starlight Bourbon Finished in Blueberry Pour Barrels. I put in the single barrels because my single barrel lists, the goal of that is to highlight, hey, these are producers that are doing really interesting things. I highly suggest you watch them if you haven't already. And so that was a unique uh, thing to put in the picks list. I'm putting it here because this is a really unique finish. I mean, this is that kind of digestive, like interesting end of the night thing. It's changed a little bit as the bottle has been open, but super jammy super fruity it's such an interesting profile this is like this has become a bottle that like i want to end the night on uh, i wouldn't even mind starting the night on this either kind of in like like that amaro type area it's not quite as bitter but it's kind of got that big pop of flavor a little bit drying it's kind of like that blueberry note that just makes it kind of desserty as well it doesn't have the super long linger but if you want something that's got kind of a quicker linger that's why i mentioned this digestif if you want kind of a nice pop nice something to drink um, and it leaves trailing a little bit on the drier side on your palate, but this right here has just been a spectacular bottle. This could have been number one. It almost was number one. I was going back and forth between it and number one, um, but it landed here right now. Starlight Blueberry Port Barrel, super surprising uh, bottle. I think it's a really weird one. People are gonna watch this and be like, Blueberry Port, are you kidding me? But this is surprisingly really, really good. All right, coming in at number one on my list is Case Study 2 from Frank August. This is their XO PX Brandy Finished. Now this is 101 proof, and I don't think it drinks all that heavy, but I feel like it's got a lot of wide appeal. I feel like it's really balanced for all the things that it is. There's finishing, and the finishing is very candied sweet, but it's not overly candied sweet. I feel like there's some like nuanced oak in there as well, but it's not overly oaky. This bottle kind of reminds me of when I used to enjoy drinking like Elmer T. Lee and Rock Hill Farms. It's kind of got a nice fruitiness, but there's nothing that's offensive about the profile. It's just good drinking Kentucky straight bourbon. And the finish is, as it lingers, maybe a little bit more prominent than say, you know, an unfinished Rock Hill Farms or Elmer T. Lee. But if you like those profiles that drink kind of fun, fruity, it's not offensive. You're maybe a Buffalo Trace drinker. You like Rock Hill Farms. You like uh, Elmer T. Lee. They're harder to come by. Now, now this wasn't necessarily uh, an inexpensive bottle by any means, but I think it's just a really enjoyable sipper. I feel like I could bring this out and it'd be easy for a lot of people to enjoy drinking it where some of the higher proof ones are a little bit brash. Uh, you get to some of the toasted ones that we have and they're very specific in profile. This is a very easy drinking uh, pour, but that doesn't sacrifice like all the flavors so you can try and pull out of it. So number one on my list of finished whiskeys for the year, Frank August, there are case study two PX Brandy finish. There were a lot of finished bourbons and ryes and, and American single malts and all those things this year. So I'd love to hear from you all what some of your favorite finished whiskeys have been down in the comments below. Let me know if there's things that I missed specifically from, from this list. Uh, uh, maybe there's things I have checked out and talk about. Maybe there's things I haven't and that need to be on my radar. I'd love to hear from you all what you all think about it. Make sure you're checking out all these other lists that I'm doing. Again, this is a year where I'm trying to break things down into different sections. I'll be curious to hear from you all in the end. Do you like having me break them down into different sections? Do you wish I did a bigger list? Do you have difficulty kind of navigating what on the top of the list? How would it compare to some of the other tops in the other lists? I understand all that, uh, you know, I but I wanted to go ahead and stay true to how I broke things down in my notes this year and put out these different videos and see how that resonated. So let me know what you all think down in the comments below. Thanks again for tuning into another video, guys. Hope it was insightful, informational. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time.